first important design rule in a supersonic wind tunnel is that if you ever design a wind tunnel where your A2, this area here, is not more than A1, you will lose your job in the next week. So recently we have had quite a bit of news about hypersonics, future weapons of war, supersonic aircraft, and supersonic space travel, as well as commercial transport. There's companies like Boom Supersonics, Spike Aerospace, as well as Arion Corporation, and they're actively developing supersonic aircraft to change our game of transportation. So with that being in the news now, I decided to make this video on how supersonic wind tunnels work. If you have watched my videos on rocket nozzles on part one and part two, the application can be driven over to supersonic wind tunnels. So let's get started and see how that works. The wind tunnel is simply a big chamber in which a scale model of an aerospace vehicle is tested. This is done to save time and money in building this new vehicle. When companies like Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Airbus, Bombardier develop a new airplane, they first build a scale model and they test it extensively in the wind tunnel. And in the wind tunnels, you can evaluate things like the effect of drag on the vehicle, the effect of air turbulence, how the vehicle will respond to changes in temperature, pressure outside and so on, as well as components of a vehicle. So they test things like engines in a wind tunnel. When companies like Rolls-Royce or GE build a new engine, they test it in a wind tunnel to see how it will respond to various conditions. And this is very important because they, are, it, they do a very good job of simulating real life conditions. Wind tunnels can be broken down into two parts. You have subsonic and supersonic. In a subsonic wind tunnel, you simply have a fan which spins and it pushes air down your, your chamber. But in a supersonic wind tunnel, you will need to have speeds faster than Mach 1 and Mach number is the speed of sound. So when your Mach number is more than 1, which it means that you're supersonic, so that means that you will have to have a different wind tunnel design. Let's now look at how these wind tunnels actually work and I'll show you guys a detailed explanation of how to actually design a wind tunnel. All right guys, so here we have a cross-section of a supersonic wind tunnel. It basically consists of an intake, which is a rocket engine nozzle, and that is connected to a test section in which your model airplane or rocket can be tested. And then you have a blowdown section. And each of these sections have their own role and they are designed for safety. So you have a pressure here and a pressure there. This tunnel, when it's not started, the pressure here will be equal to the pressure there or you will have like a tank which is compressed gas and it's just kept as it is. So, so this pressure ratio, which is let's call it P0 over Px. So as you lower P0, or you will make this less than one, you will have air flowing from this tunnel, all right? Initially, you will have subsonic flow everywhere because this pressure ratio is not too high and if you want to understand this in more detail, you have to watch my part two video on how a rocket engine nozzle works. And from that, you will get the principle of how this subsonic flow occurs. Well, when you have subsonic flow everywhere, this Mach number cannot be reached. And this wind tunnel or any supersonic wind tunnel in general is designed to achieve a specific Mach number here at the test section. So initially you will have subsonic flow and eventually as you lower this ratio even more, you will have what, what is known as a normal shock forming here. This also occurs in the rocket nozzles and this normal shock, as you lower this ratio, it will move downstream. So it will move this way here. And eventually this normal shock will be attached here. So when you have a normal shock over here, that is when you have the worst case scenario and they designed wind tunnels to withstand pressures which are here. Since here you will have supersonic flow now, your Mach number in this area will be more than one more than one and your pressure will be some value p1 when you go past this normal shock your Mach number will be subsonic and your pressure will have a, a high surge p2 is more than pp1 this pressure jump is very high since this Mach number here is at the most and the, the strength of a normal shock is stronger when the upstream Mach number or this m1 is higher because your pressure jump will be really much higher than that. So they designed wind tunnels for this condition here. So eventually as you keep lowering this ratio or as you keep decreasing P naught, 
this and the normal shock will keep moving downstream here. It will get to a point where it is beyond the second nozzle. As you keep lowering this pressure ratio, your flow will no longer be over expanded as I mentioned in my rocket nozzle videos. And this normal shock will actually not disappear. It will stay at a point here downstream of this point. Well, when you have this, it is called your steady state operation. And this normal shock will not be there anymore, so let's erase it. And here you will have Mach is equal to 1. Here you will have M1. M1 is equal to M. And that's your design Mach number, the Mach number you designed this wind tunnel for. Here your Mach number will be the same. And here it will be some value which is less than this Mach number. But this is also more than 1. So what I'm saying here is that this, the Mach number at this point will be less than your design Mach number but it'll still be supersonic. So why is that? Because that if you look at compressible flows, they actually slow down when you have a decrease in area and they speed up when you have an increase in area. This is a fundamental fact of compressible flow and that is why this Mach number here will be lower than this Mach number there. What's, what's very interesting is that this blowdown phenomenon is caused by this normal shock. And I said before that when you have a normal shock, the Mach number downstream is always subsonic, which is why you will have this Mach number supersonic and then this Mach number here will be less than 1. This is something which we need because beyond this wind tunnel you will have like a big chamber which the air, air will discharge into. You have to ensure that the air is not too fast otherwise it will cause, cause damage to your wind tunnel and that is why this, this is called a blowdown. So the air is meant to slow down beyond this point and reach a subsonic state. When you are here it is safe and this test section will not be affected by this normal shock since the normal shock is beyond the test section. So that is how the wind tunnel actually works and now let's look into some design factors and why do we have to design it this way. First important design rule in a supersonic wind tunnel is that if you ever design a wind tunnel where your A2, this area here is not more than A1, you will lose your job in the next week. And why is that? It's because you will not be able to start your wind tunnel at all. You will never achieve the supersonic flow which you want to achieve which your wind tunnel is designed for. So why is that? It's because if your A2 is less than A1 or if it's equal to A1 you will have subsonic flow everywhere and the tunnel cannot start. You can also have a phenomenon where your normal shock will be stuck in this area and you will have subsonic flow beyond this normal shock and you will never, never be able to achieve your Mach number here. The way you design this A2 is you first choose A1 and your test section area. And your A2 will be a function of that. So what they use for that is they consider a normal shock here, which is the worst case scenario. And then they assume that your stagnation pressure here and here is the same, as well as there and there. And you can use this relation here to figure that out. You, you know what this is, you know what this is, and then you can figure out this ratio here, and then your A2 from there. The next very important consideration is this height. Let's call it H. So why is this? In supersonic planes, Concorde, for example, the F-22 Raptor, the F-117 Nighthawk, they have like a tip intake or a nose cone. And that is because of the fact that they either used RBCC or, you know, like a turbine based combined cycle propulsion, or they used the multiple oblique shock inlet. What I mean is that they will have oblique shocks forming here. This is an oblique shock, which means that the shock is at an angle with respect to this plane here. So this oblique shock will be very important because pressure past an oblique shock will be much higher than the pressure before an oblique shock and Mach number will be lower. So when an oblique shock hits a wall, it will reflect. You have to make sure that this reflected oblique shock will not hit the tip of this airplane. The moment it hits the tip, it will create all kinds of drag on an airplane and you will have a lot of pressure variation, so that's quite terrible if you have something like that. So they designed this H to be very high, such that this oblique shock, when it reflects at the wall, it'll, the Mach number will be here, it will be slower Mach number, and then you will have a Mach number there. And this should not touch your airplane, so it should be well past it, and, and ideally you will have a height that is very high, so your shock reflection will be something like that. It will be much beyond the test section. So that is why it's important to design a height which is quite high, and something that engineers take into consideration when they design a wind tunnel for a supersonic application. So that brings me to the end of this video guys. Thank you for watching. 
I hope you guys learned something new about supersonic wind tunnels and I also hope you guys liked the whiteboard which I just got a week ago. I just got that whiteboard so I can film YouTube videos and you know draw stuff out and show you guys how it actually works from a scientific perspective. If you have any questions or comments make sure to leave them below and I will get back to you in a reasonable time period. And with that being said I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.